Hello, I'm Judith O'Brien, formerly Wright, and I'm an Associate Family Solicitor based at Forbes Preston Branch. Welcome to the Forbes Family Team's Question and Answer Session. Today I'm going to be interviewing my colleague, Rachel Sutcliffe, who is also a family lawyer based at Preston with me. We're going to discuss some common questions that we've had since the start of this COVID-19 pandemic. Clearly we can't cover absolutely all of your concerns, but hopefully these will go some way to putting your mind at rest. If you have any further queries or concerns, then please don't hesitate to contact the Forbes family team as we're going to be more than happy to help you out. Family law is quite a wide subject, uh, but the main areas are divorce, finances and children. So the questions we're going to be looking at today cover those main topics. Rachel, the first question I'd like to ask you is in relation to hearings. If I have a private law hearing coming up, whether it's children or finances, within the next couple of weeks or the next month, first of all, is it likely to be going ahead? And secondly, how? Well, most hearings are still going ahead. Um, some hearings may be considered by a judge alone with just the paper and the documentation in front of them. Um, they will still take into consideration the details within the application, anything that you and the other party have had to, have said within their statement, and they will still be guided by CAFCAS. In cases where the judge can't deal with the um, application on their own, the hearings are still going ahead and will likely be conducted remotely. This is usually by telephone, however, it some hearings are going ahead by Skype. You will have to provide the court with your contact details no less than seven days before the hearing, and they will contact you at the time and date of the hearing directly. However, if there are any immediate risks to your child in the interim, you must let the court know without delay. Thank you for that, Rachel. Again, another very common uh, question and quite straightforward, even though the pandemic is currently going ahead, can I now start divorce proceedings? Yes, divorce proceedings can still be issued. Um, you still submit them, you can do it online or you can instruct solicitors like myself or Judith and we can do it on your behalf. Um, at the moment, the courts are prioritising applications for decree eyesight and decree absolute. However, you can still issue your own court, uh, your own divorce petition. Um, the court have, in fact, informed me yesterday that there is a wait of around 12 weeks for a divorce petition to be issued by the court. However, they can still be sent in. That's good to know and up-to-date information as well, which is good. Um, probably the most common question we've had is in relation to children, understandably. Now, if couple have reached agreement about their children post-separation, whether mutually or with the court involvement, are they able to now just vary that arrangement? It's quite easy to vary an arrangement by agreement. So even if there is a court order in place and you and your ex-partner have come to an agreement in respect of what's going to be going on in the interim, you don't have to, and the court would not expect you to apply to court to vary that court order. It can just be done by agreement between you and your ex-partner. And then as soon as all these restrictions have been lifted, you just go back as per the court order. Um, if obviously the, the, there would be a difficulty then if you and your ex-partner can't agree what is happening at the moment with the restrictions in place. However, the current guidelines are that a child can and should still travel between households to spend time with both parents. So despite the restrictions, restrictions that are in place, a child should still be spending time with, the, with both of their parents. However, we've also got to exercise common sense in a situation like this. Um, if you, your child or a family member that you are living with is at high risk, then you have to consider whether it is in yours and your child's best interest to be having contact with the other parent. And it might be difficult um, and it might be a difficult decision to make. However, if there is a risk, you have to exercise common sense 
and that common sense may be that that child should not be having direct contact with the other parent in the interim. If that is the case, um, I strongly suggest that you do arrange some indirect contact, such as telephone calls, Skype, something like that, so that the child still keeps in touch with the other parent and their relationship isn't affected by this. Oh, and then finally, just a quick question. Um, if, as a result of this pandemic, I have lost my job, or if I've been furloughed, which has resulted in my income being reduced quite severely, do I still have to pay child maintenance to my former partner for our child or children? Have lost your job, then obviously you are without an income. So if you're without an income, you're not going to be able to, to pay maintenance. However, before stopping payments, you should speak to your ex-partner and explain to them the difficulties that you're currently facing in regards to your income. Um, and it may be that you can come to, again, a, a holding position or an agreed interim payment that you may be able to make each month. However, it may be that you need to go back to CMS and they will do a reassessment of your means um, and the income that you should, the maintenance that you should be paying for your child or children. Well, as I said at the beginning in this introduction, there are just a few, a handful of questions, probably the most common uh, that we've been getting since the start of all of this. Um, you can contact the Forbes family team for any of your family law issues. And the details will be posted at the end of this presentation. So thank you for your time today and I hope that's been of some use to you.